Hello, everybody from an undisclosed location somewhere in North America. This is Robert Hensley, your Truth Be Told Minuteman, with a new episode of Truth Be Told Minuteman Report. So, hope everyone had a great holiday. It's the day after Christmas, 2022. I'm looking into the new year and uh, a lot of exciting things coming up for Truth Be Told, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but <clears throat> for today, I want to talk about uh, an urban legend. Uh, you know, just as you do, you kind of go down, um, I don't want to say go down a rabbit hole, but you have traditions. My tradition is on Christmas Day, I watch horror films. <clears throat> and uh, so yesterday I watched the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, I was having a conversation with somebody and they started talking about, um, and I'm sure you've all heard it, the urban legend of um, if you die in a dream, then you die in real life. And so the question is, how do you know? Right. Because if you died in your dream and you died in real life, you're not there to tell anybody. <laughs> right. And there's no way to medically tell if that's the case. You know, it's not like the medical examiner comes in and sees somebody who died in their sleep and says, oh, he hit the ground. <laughs> right. You know, like there's that old that old saying, too, like if you're falling in your dream and you hit the ground, you die. Well, that they can't put that on your death certificate like cause of death hit the ground <laughs> so we started talking about this this idea and, and how it was kind of silly there's not really a way to tell um if that's you know the case or if it's true and so we started doing a little uh research online and we found a um <clears throat> an article by cassidy ward and uh it had uh for us what seemed to answer all of our questions and so I thought that we would talk a little bit about that today because, again, we hear these things. They become part of our pop culture. They become part of our um, uh, just culture in general. Um, you know, and here at Truth Be Told, we talk a lot about it and think a lot about things that are a little askew and, and outside of the mainstream, um, lucid dreaming and, and things where people do talk about how the reality of our dreams become the reality of our um become our actual reality. Um, <clears throat> and so we wanted to talk about this a little bit. So here's the thing, right? Again, <clears throat> it's all about phrasing, right? The urban legend is very absolute. If you die in your dream, you die in real life. Absolute. No, like it's very black and white. However, if we rephrase that and turn it into a question or add a query to that statement, um, is it possible to die in real life if you die in a dream? Then the answers changes, right? Then we can, that's something that we can find out the truth about. And the answer is, right? Are you ready for this? Yes. The answer is yes. So, um, and, and again, this is, um, you know, just what is presented scientifically and medically. Um, but it's uh, it comes down to being scared to death, right? And that is um, rare, but it's possible, right? So when we're frightened, our body goes into fight or flight mode. It's designed to save us, right? <laughs> um, and uh, it's uh, your body is, is flooded with adrenaline, right? And the heart beats faster. Blood flow is rerouted to major muscle groups so that you can get the hell away. And um, if you're predisposed, right, um, to a cardiac event, this kind of flood or this influx of, of adrenaline is not great, right? It could lead to death. Um, so <sighs> what was meant to keep us alive now can actually put you into danger. Um so, um, so adrenaline, you know, uh, is a great thing. We love it. It increases cognitive ability in the short term, um, increased physical response. Um, but, uh, it is toxic in large amounts, large amounts of adrenaline, <clears throat> uh, for extended periods of time, right? Cause remember flight or fight, the fight or flight response is, is momentary, right? It just helps you to kind of kick your ass into gear and get out of danger, but now if someone is sleeping and they're in a dream and they're in their they're stuck in their subconscious and they can't get out right <laughs> and they're being scared to death and they're in this um 
they're being frightened for a long period of time. You don't know how long. Um, this toxic levels of adrenaline damage the heart, damage the lungs, the liver, the kidneys. And <clears throat> um, they've shown that, that this kind of flood of adrenaline, um, especially for long periods of time, can cause calcium to enter the cardiac cells, which causes the heart to contract. And if enough adrenaline is pumped in, and all the cardiac cells are getting is calcium, they don't stop contracting. Therefore, it causes arrhythmia, and you die. Right? Um, so we know that this is possible. Um, and the medical case for this, right, the scientific case for this, is something called Sudden Unexpected Nocturnal Death Syndrome, or SUNDS, S-U-N-D-S. Um, and this kind of became very popular um, or a popular part of our medical culture in the 1980s. So, um, and this is wild. I didn't know this. Uh, <laughs> so in 1981, there were reports of sudden death during sleep that began being reported to the CDC. And every, all these cases were somehow isolated to groups of people who had um, immigrated to the United States from Southeast Asia, uh, mostly Cambodia. And uh, these these people were healthy, right? They got here, they were healthy, they were happy, seemed to be going well. Between the ages of 25 and 44 years old, prime time of their lives, and they're dying in their sleep, right? In total, it was 117 cases reported between 1981 and 1988, right? And as far as anyone could tell, their hearts just stopped, and they died in their sleep. <clears throat> None of the individuals had any history of cardiac events, and uh, there was only one person out of the 117 who actually had a family history of heart disease, right? One person out of 117 had a family history of heart disease. Everyone else, clean bill of health for everybody, and they still died in their sleep. Um, and now as the years progressed, <clears throat> the number of reported incidents of sons uh, decreased. Um, so... All of these people dying in their sleep in the 1980s kinds of tape kind of tapers off a little bit. Now, uh, and this is <laughs> this is where we kind of how we ended up at, in this uh, on this yesterday is that according to Wes Craven, he was uh, inspired by one of the stories of the son's victims um, or the son's patients, son's uh, deaths. We'll say. Uh, the first Nightmare on Elm Street film <clears throat> was actually uh, uh, he had read a story about a family who had come to the United States from Cambodia. Their son was um, suffering uh, nightmares and they were so severe that he was doing anything and everything that he could to keep from sleeping. Um, and when he did eventually fall asleep, he died. Um, and so this story this that he read um, of this son's case, <clears throat> again, if if you if you've watched Nightmare on Elm Street like I did yesterday, <laughs> uh, you know that that sounds very 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 familiar. Uh, so night terrors, you know, which uh, we kind of consider half waking um, dream states that are accompanied with feelings of of panic and and fear and well, of course terror, uh, <laughs> um, have been observed in a lot of the cases prior to son's deaths, right? So it does kind of explain um, how people are uh, being scared to death in their dreams and dying um, and how it's being listed as sons. Um, now, there was um, a paper uh, published by the Journal of, America, of the American Heart Association uh, that uh, stated that refugees exhibited high levels of depression and anxiety in the early years after relocating to the United States. Those rates dropped off in subsequent years. The anxiety could have triggered night terrors leading to cardiac events, which ultimately claimed the lives of vulnerable individuals. So <clears throat> although there's no way of knowing whether or not the people who passed away from sons actually were actually dreaming and scared to death in their dreams. Um, <clears throat> but uh, there is or does seem to be some kind of correlation between parasomnias or sleep disorders, like night terrors, and the sudden onset of death during sleep. Um, and we do know that there are mechanisms which exist for the heart to be catastrophically impacted. Um, 
and this is a quote, uh, we know that mechanisms exist for the heart to be catastrophically impacted by overwhelming emotions like fear. Right? Who, like, our, like, our bodies seem so strong and so capable and and something like being scared in our dreams can do us in, you know? Um, and of course, uh, the only way to kind of keep this from happening or one of the ways to kind of safeguard yourself from, happen from this happening is to mind your heart health. A healthy heart is harder to stop um, in a dream, apparently. So, uh, yeah, so that's this episode of Minuteman Report. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, there are three opportunities for new Truth Be Told content every week. Uh, Minuteman Report every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern. Bonnie Burkhart with Truth Be Told Transformations, that's the spiritual metaphysical stuff, is on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern. And of course, Tony Sweet with the original Truth Be Told on Fridays, same time, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern. And dun, 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 coming in January, uh, we have, Lo, I'm going to try to pronounce this, La Verdad Se Habla, uh, or The Truth is Spoken, uh, which is the Spanish, the Spanish language version of Truth Be Told, which is going to be hosted by the Latinx uh, music artist Metaphor. And um, that will be on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern. So uh, if you're looking for Spanish language content, uh, that's where you'll find it, Tuesdays, uh, here with all of the other Truth Be Told content. And um, if you have any questions or comments or have stories, ideas, things you want us to look into, send us an email. We're happy to take a glance. Uh, reportminuteman at gmail.com. Again, that's reportminuteman at gmail.com. And uh, as always... Stay safe out there and stay true. Until next week, have a good one, everybody.